Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, lecture. In this lecture, I want to talk about spanning set of a vector space. So let's start with the definition. We have a set of vector, again, V1, V2, Vk, and that's a non-empty set and it's in Rn. The span of S, that's how you write it, is span of those vectors. So and the way you write it, it's a C1, V1 times C2, V2 times CK, VK, and again, dot, dot, dot. And Cs are just real numbers. So the span of S is the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in S. Now, there's a note here. So the individual vectors v1, v2, and uh, dot, 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 vk are members of the span of S. So little theorem. If you are in Rn, the span of the zero vector is just the zero vector. Any number times zero is going to be zero. Now, I did some examples for you so you can kind of understand what the span of uh, vectors or a vector set is. So if we want to do a span of one vector in R2, and I tried to show that with an example, if you take a vector in R2, the components are three, negative two, that's what I picked. And we are in R2, we know because we have two components. S, our set is just that vector, and you can write it like that. The question is, uh, what is the span of that set or span of that vector? So the span of that vector is any multiple scalar of that vector. So it's t times 3, 2, and we know t is a real number. So if I draw that vector, we know we have the x component is 3, the y component is negative 2. So we have our vector. I'll talk about that in a second. If you want to find the span of a vector, you can just put x, y, and t times that vector, which is 3t and negative 2t. So x is 3t and y is negative 2t. If you isolate t, t is x over 3 here and y over negative 2 here. So x over 3 will we can put these two equal to each other and you can cross multiply isolate by i'm sure this looks very familiar to you this is just the equation of a line the slope is negative two over three and the y-intercept is zero so it passes through the origin so it's just a line through the origin so any scalar multiple of this vector is going to be always that line and that's the equation of the line y equals to negative 2 over 3 x i put the note here for you the span of a single non-zero vector in r2 is a line passing through the through the origin Let's look at example number two. Here we are in R3, so always one vector. So we want the span of V. You can do the same thing. X, Y, Z equals to T times 3 times 5 times negative 2. So you get 3T, 5T, and negative 2T. X equals to 3T, Y equals to 5T, and Z equals to negative 2T. Isolate T in each case. First of all, these are parametric equations of the line and uh, through the origin again. If you isolate T and uh, put them equal to each other, then you get the symmetric equations of a line through the origin. So what is the conclusion? If V is a vector in Rn, a non-zero vector, the span of V is geometrically a line in Rn passing through the origin. Now let's talk about span of two non-zero vectors, u and v, and we're gonna analyze different cases. 
Well, the first case, if u and v are parallel, that means u, they're scalar multiple of each other. Here I'll put u equals to k times v. If we write ru plus sv, that's r times kv because u is kv plus sv, you can factor out v and you get rk plus s times v and rk plus s is just a constant itself. So you can write tv. Conclusion span of u is the same as, same as span of v and it is a line through the origin. So that's in case the vectors are parallel. If u and v are not parallel, and uh, I did the case two here. First, let's do it in R to see what we get. So I did do an example again. So the components of U are five, two, and the components of V are three, four. You can pick any number you want. So W is X, Y, then you can write that as R U plus S times V substitute. And if you write you know that x is going to be here five times r plus three s that's what i have and y will be two times r plus four times s and that's what we have in this case let's try to uh, first <clears throat> we're going to try to eliminate r so we can uh, take the second big equation multiplied by five and that's what you get if you add them you get five y minus two x equals to 14 s then we can go ahead and here uh, eliminate s so we can multiply the first one by four so here and the second one by three so we eliminate this so r equals to 4x minus 3 by over 14. these are just any numbers so it could be any numbers there is no restriction so if u is the span of u and v then uh, u can be written as ru plus sv so basically what's the meaning of that if u and v are in R2 and are non-parallel, then span of U is going to be any vector in R2. So you can say two vectors, two non-parallel vectors in R2 span the entire R2. That means any vector in R2 can be expressed as a linear combination of U and V. And you can write that as W equals to RU plus SV. Case three, two vectors in R3. Let's see what happens here. So I did again take an example, and these are our vectors that they are in R3. So we want to find the span of those two vectors in R3. So we want to see what we get here. Same way you can write x, y, in this case, z equals to r, u plus s, v. So if you simplify, so to get the, you can multiply the first one by r, the second one by s, and then you get 3 r plus 5 s for the x component, 4 r minus 2 s for the y component, and negative r plus 3 s for the z component. So if you write those equations, x is that, 3r plus 5s, y is that, 4r minus 2s, and z is that, negative r plus 3s. You can take 2 and 3 and isolate, uh, not isolate, but uh, eliminate r. So you can multiply 3 by 4, add them up. On the left side, you get y plus 4z, and on the right side, you get 10s. You can go to one and two and eliminate R again by multiplying the top one by negative four and uh, the bottom or number two by three. I have the result here. If you do that, then you're still left with negative two S. R is canceled. So we canceled R 
here and you cancel the R here and you isolate it. Now we have an S and an S here we can put, they're the same thing, so we can put these two equal to each other, cross multiply and simplify. So if you do that and you take everything to one side and uh, combine like terms, you first get that, but you can simplify this by dividing every single term by eight. So you get five X minus seven Y minus 13 Z equals to zero. In three dimension or in 3D, this is equation of a plane. When you have zero, that means the plane passes through the origin. So this is a plane through the origin. The way you can write that, the span of X, uh, the span of these two vectors where X, Y, Z are in R3 is the equation of the plane through the origin. Now the planes, they all have a normal vector and U and V both are gonna be perpendicular to that vector, the normal vector. So the, if you do U dot N, you're gonna get zero. And if you do V dot N, you're gonna get zero. Again, two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, the dot product is zero. Note, if U and V are vectors in R3 that are non-parallel, the span of U and V, so is geometrically a plane and sometimes a plane is like a big pi. That's how you can show a plane that passes through the origin. So remember the span of two non-parallel or non-coplanar vectors in R3 is a plane through the origin. So here, if U, V and W are non-parallel and non-coplanar vectors in R3, so if you have three non-parallel, non-coplanar, that means they're linearly independent in R3, then it's obvious the span of those three vectors is going to be the entire R3. So that's how you find spans of vector sets. Uh, please, again, watch this video two or three times and try some examples on your own or uh, redo the examples I did in this video. Thank you for watching and I'll uh, see you all in my next video. Have a great one, everyone.